الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين اللهم صل على فاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها بعدد ما أحاط به المك Dear teachers, respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And it is an honor and a pleasure to be with you all, dear brothers and sisters, my dear children from this holy city of Lady Fatima, Lady Fatima al Ma'asuma, who is a direct daughter of Lady Fatima al Zahra. As we commemorate and we offer our condolences to the Imam of our time and the Ahl al Bayt, especially the Holy Prophet, Amirul Mu'mineen Imam Ali and Imam Al Hassan and Hussein and Lady Zainab and Umm Kulthum on the occasion of the martyrdom anniversary of Lady Fatima al Zahra, Salamullahi Alayha. As we all know, Lady Fatima is the daughter of the Holy Prophet and that is her identification in this world. But in one way, being the daughter of the Prophet, the Prophet himself calls her his own mother, Um Abiha. It's a very interesting thing that we find in the life of Lady Fatima al Zahra that she is called the mother of her own father. Now there are reasons that we see that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who we know does not talk in hyperbole. He does not exaggerate when it is not the truth. He does not speak anything except for it is inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is divine revelation. So when Rasulullah says, Fatima to Ummu Abiha, Fatima is the mother of her father, there's surely some secret behind it. And obviously the secret is there for us to think about, to reflect on, but historians tell us one thing. And inshallah, one of the lessons we would like to take from the life of Lady Fatima al-Zahra sallallahu alayhi alayha is from this title of Um Abiha, that when the Holy Prophet was being persecuted by the pagans of Mecca, by the disbelievers of Mecca, by his enemies in Mecca, and he had hardly any supporters left. And especially he had hardly anybody to take care of him. Even his beloved wife, Lady Khadija was martyred. She passed away and his supports were also being taken away from him. It was at that time that Lady Fatima who was a mere seven to nine year old girl, she was still in her young age that she would care for her father when he would be hurt by people by their tongues he would she would console him when he would be hurt physically by people she would mend her his injuries and she would take care of him she would provide for his needs at home and therefore she would care for the holy prophet despite being his daughter as a mother and some historians have said yes that's one main reason that she is called Um Abiha. And that gives us something to think about. That is something for us to reflect upon. That there is never a time that we can do some responsible activities in life. There is never a time that we should say that, oh, I'm still young. I don't have to take responsibilities upon me. And when we look at the life of Lady Fatima, she was merely seven to nine years old, but she was acting like a mother for who? her own father. And that leaves us a very important lesson from the life of Lady Fatima that we're never too young to take up responsibilities. Inshallah, we hope to learn this from Lady Fatima to Zahra's life and start to take responsibilities. If we're young, we take responsibilities based on our own capacity. And if we're older, we take up higher and more important responsibilities. Another lesson, that we take from the life of Lady Fatima to Zahra Salamullahi Alaiha, if we reflect and see how old were all of the Ma'asumin when they passed away from this world. We see the youngest Imam was Imam Al-Jawad Alayhi Salam. 
He was 25 years old. And he's the youngest Imam to be martyred in the way of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we find even younger than Imam al-Jawad alayhi salam, who was the youngest of all Imams to be martyred, and the eldest and the most oldest was Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam at the age of 65. We find Bibi Fatima, Lady Fatima, Az zahra sallallahu alayhi was 18 years old when she was martyred. And in this short life, the shortest of all of the Masumin alayhi salam, she has become an embodiment and an example for all of us to think about one more important thing in life, that we should never think our age is a limit for us to succeed. This is something we should realize that we're never too young to succeed in life and never too young to become as perfect as we can and progress as much as we can in life. Never think that I will become better when I'll grow up, when I'll become 20, when I'll become 30, when I'll become 40. When I'm old, I will inshallah do more of good things. No, Lady Fatima left us this example that ever since she was a young child, ever since she was a tween, ever since she was a teenager, and she, she passed away from this life as a teenager, 18 years old. But she left us this, this remarkable example in life that as a teenager, she is now somebody, not because of her age, but because of her status near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the whole of the Ahl al-Bayt, the 13 other Ma'asumin, the 13 other men from the Ma'asumin look up to this lady from within themselves. On one hand, she is the mother of her father. On the other hand, she is the soulmate of her husband, Imam Ali alayhi salam. On the other hand, she is the mother of all of the Aima. She is called Um al aima It is remarkable how Lady Fatima achieved so much in such little time, in 18 years of her age. And that's another reminder that we should never think that we are too young to start working hard and to start building our Akhira or to start doing good deeds. No, the time is now, rather it was yesterday. Wherever we are, whatever we're doing in life, we should always think of doing the best at it and inshallah, do, do things that will be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the question that I have now for myself and us all, Lady Fatima, we have two messages through important lessons from our life. One is that she tells us, she shows us through our life that we're never too young to take responsibility in life. And on the other hand, we're never too young to succeed in life. What was the essential quality that Lady Fatima to Zahra had that allowed her to become successful, not only in taking up responsibility in life, but to actually be able to succeed and progress towards perfection and to higher status near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in life. And when we look at her life, and rather when we look at the words of the Ahl al-Bayt when we look at the words of the ziyara that we recite for Lady Fatima to Zahra alayha, we know one thing is for sure. The ziyara actually became, begins with these words, Ya Mumtahana, O oh, the one who has been tested, who has been put through trials, who has, who has been put through tribulations in life. But the ziyara doesn't say that you'll be put under tribulations in this life, O oh, Fatima. Rather, Allah has tested her even before placing her in this world. And Allah, when he tested her, and when she went through the trials, there's one important quality that we're told by the Ahlul Bayt that she possessed. And that is, فَوَجَدَ لِمَمْ تَحَنَكَ بِهِ صَابِرَ She was found to be patient. She was of patience. She had sabr, she had this quality of patience that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala found in her and she actually showed in herself that she was chosen to be of such high level of status. And that was a secret to her success. That was a secret to her being able to take a responsibility in the face of difficulties and in the face of the even young age that she had. 
The more sabr she did, the more sabr and perseverance and patience she exhibited and showed in her life, the higher she went in her status near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a reminder for us, for me and you all, brothers and sisters. It's a reminder that when we look at the life of Lady Fatima, we should remember if we really want to be in sync and love Lady Fatima the way we should love her truly, we need to be able to have that patience in our lives the way Lady Fatima showed us. It's very important that we realize not by simply looking at her life and weeping and mourning her life as we do in these days of, of Fatimiyah, but let's try in our lives to be more patient. And indeed in today's world where everything is quick, where everything is instant, where everything is wanting to be done quickly, well, patience comes very difficult in this kind of society that we live in. And this is exactly where we need to put more effort into becoming more and more patient. What can I do to become more patient? Well, the very first thing that me and you can do is to use our intellect. The very first thing that we should do before doing anything, and that shows us that we need to take a deep breath before we jump into anything, before we actually commit something, before we actually end up doing something, we need to take a step back and think, hang on for a second. What is being done here? Is it correct? Is it true? Is it good? And if it is, if it is going to get me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if it is in line with what will make me a good person, is it in line with what will make me a good house in Jannah in the hereafter? Well, after thinking about all of these things, I will make up my mind and then decide whether to do something or not. And therefore the very first thing me and you need to do, which will help us develop patience, is to think, is to reflect, is to actually realize that what I am actually going in for, is it good for my life in this world and the hereafter or not? And if it is, then inshallah, we will go into it. But this time that we take to think, this moment that we take to reflect will be very key to developing patience in our lives, inshallah. Ta we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the right of Lady, uh, Lady Fatima al Zahra, in the holy proximity of the haram of Lady Ma'asuma, salamullahi alayha, another Fatima of the Ahlul Bayt, the daughter of Fatima and Khadija, salamullahi alayhima, the daughter of Imam Musa ibn Ja'far, alayhi salam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the tawfiq and the success in our lives to be Fatimi, to be like Lady Fatima, by giving us the ability to realize our responsibilities in life and to take our responsibilities seriously. And also by making us realize that there is never too early a time for us to work towards success in this world and the hereafter. We pray to Allah to make our lives Fatimi, inshallah wa ta'ala, with the barakah of salawat ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.